Well, I just got the nice round number of uh, 635. So I will call us to order. And uh, forgive me in advance, I'm sharing and taking the minutes. Carlos can't make it. Um, I, it actually keeps me focused and I'm not a voting member. So I'll just be super lightning. If anyone's off topic, I'll know. Um, we're called to order at 630. And let me add Mike Doyle to the present list. And uh, the rest of our members will be remote if they show. Um, public comments, Steve, welcome. You gonna record the it, this is automatically recording and we do broadcast. That is correct, right? Chris, we're recording tonight as every uh, night. I'll double check, yeah. We've been on, we've been on this, we've been on our Orca page. Um, in less than a week after we're getting up and leaving. Yeah, it, um, I'm assuming that's our default at this point. It's been months. Second, yes, sorry. No problem. Can we set it so big? Yes, we, we've been recording. Chris, can, can we set it so big as that? Uh, Especially when people come in to meet? Yes, so that is the I'm not sure what the E one is. Don't know. Maybe the recorder. They set it to speaker priority. Can we get, especially as we get in remote people coming in, can we get this one big? And I'm not sharing anything else. Did I take your space? No, no. Yeah, I'm logged into mm -hmm. So Okay, so you are the recorder. Okay. So we're screen capturing it, but if you can hit report on that end too. That's way better. And as Sue pops in. Recording in progress. I feel alive. All right. CJ is quiet, so I'm assuming she got everything. I sent her the full agenda with everything, passcode, phone in. Um, was that your public comment, Steve? Or? Well, no, that was pre preparatory. Uh, some of this might merit being shoved to a, a different agenda item, but I didn't have enough time to review your agenda to know whether. I mean, sure, sure. So, uh, I don't know enough about the new management box to. Yeah, 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 and 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 so you'll learn about that. We're, what what we're I'm moving into two is the kind of structural. It, it may be preliminary uh, or premature to be setting in stone some of these new management models or whatever, because as Orca migrates to more public funding, and I have been engaged in trying to identify funding sources that the state could commit to in an ongoing way. Mm -hmm. um, that is going to raise issues of transparency and accountability that are going to be difficult. Uh, even right now, Orca being the holder of the media recordings for the city of Montpelier and ambiguity between the city and the or Orca over who owns what and who's entitled to have a copy of what and at what cost and uh, is it edited or not? I mean, I don't want a nonprofit board embargoing a hot mic moment that we need to hold the official accountable, you know? Mm -hmm. And that kind of thing could happen. And so I just think we're, there's a lot of hot issues that need to be, but we also need to engage more people and make it a more dynamic. It's become clickish and it's it was a mistake to give up a downtown presence. I said it then that you need to invest in a downtown presence for, for the folks that are going to come in, the high school students and the, the one-off uh, producers. Uh, they need to have easy access to equipment. It's not easy getting it up here and in and out of here. So uh, these are things that need to be thought about but they and i don't know how best to fit into your 
planning process. The the clickishness, the not getting return phone calls, you know, trying to pick get, you know, and part of that was Rob, and part of it's Rob leftovers and and for, you know the ghost of Rob, and we really need to wholly envision a new model for how this becomes a community resource that it's also because more and more of your audience is going to be over streaming to interesting <clears throat> everybody in the state sure. and Montpelier needs to be the, the, the flagship, you know, and, and we don't have the capacity here. We actually right provide a lot of the content for the statewide channel, like I know, but an outsized proportion. I don't mean to put you on the defensive. I'm just saying we're we're not getting routinely uh I mean if we chart all the meetings that, that need to get recorded, but they're gonna need a fun a share a fun sharing model through the statewide access channel that allows those other access centers to pay you for the outsized proportion of content that you're putting in. And I don't hear or see that discussion. It's been this statewide thing that's been going on, talked about for years. And so I guess I'll leave it at that. I, I appreciate it. I mean, the the values that you were speaking from are all important to us, transparency, accountability. And like the who the who owns what, like we're not the official archiver for a lot of these um, public entities. But we but a clearly a, a gavel to gavel recording is is you know and has public value. I right? think maybe more than gavel to gavel. You need to show the legislature that as soon as a quorum is present, the cameras are running, you know, and because that's the way committee because the committee has been an abomination in the legislature to watch those people turn off the camera when all the committee work and scheduling and attitudes are being discussed, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's it's and so by setting a standard for transparency, when forum is present, I got that idea from Paul Heinz. Forum's present, the cameras are running, and you just get used to it, you know? So, but we, there's a lot of work. You might need a subcommittee to focus on some of this stuff yeah, and, yeah. and bring some ideas back to the board. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, well, I appreciate it all. And, um, and we are, you know, we're in, the physical transition, although it happened in February 2020, it was March 2020, which was COVID time. So we have yet to have our open house here to say welcome community. Um, and we, you know, the fall, fingers crossed. Um, and then also we're looking at um, um, a, a different uh, staffing structure. And we're going to roll that out tonight. And we're looking forward to that. Well, and we're that into problems that need resolution faster than that. With the Montpelier recordings, with the Central Vermont Public Safety Authority refusing to record, that they're used, refusing to record, claiming you're their official repository. Okay, and you're not under a contract to record either of those. You have no public records production obligations for copies and costs. So you may need to force your client towns into contracting with you as repository and you set them each up with their own google drive terabyte or 10 terabyte you know modules and they retain ownership of that in case orca ever disbands right but that's a thing you can charge a service for most cities are not prepared to take on storage of, of gigabit terabits of video so those are some ideas Great. that i, I think but I, I'm wrestling with CDPSA refusing to make a recording, even though the law explicitly states they must. And the city and John would like to have recordings, but he had trouble getting a return phone call. You know. Thank you. I ca I captured the specifics of that last idea. Um, and it's on recording. <laughs> and it's already recorded. Yes, but our minutes still mean something. Um, so, and we appreciate it. Uh, any other public comment? Point of information. Sure. Who's the new Rob? Um, we uh, will report out from the, we'll report out from the hiring committee, and the staff has done some really good work looking at a, a horizontal management structure. Uh, that's really uh, 
I see it solving a lot of a lot I've, of things. Yes. I've, I've seen such a thing work before in other places. You have. Great. Um, thank you. Um, we've got next up public approval. Going to one story twice. Um, approval of the minutes of uh, April was it twenty third. We are going to have to table. Carlos is in Puerto Rico. Our secretary. Uh, he doesn't have his computer with him. He's back July fifth. When he gets back, he will check his computer. He thinks they're on his computer. I don't know why. I don't know why he didn't instantly share with Rob that night, but. Uh, Rob didn't have it. Carlos doesn't have his computer. Um, so approval of minutes will have to be tabled. Worst case scenario is if they are on his computer when he gets back, uh, someone's going to have to watch the recording and just at least record the decisions. And uh, we won't say it tonight, but that's worst case scenario. We may not have to go there. Um, and we've got Next up with the approval of the April minutes table is the financial reports. And I don't that be Mike. And we, we've got the um the board. Well, let me see. The only financial report I can say is that I have just signed three papers. Uh removing John Block. That's important. Yeah. Removing uh Rob and uh adding uh, Mike the body. Uh, we now have signature authority over the uh, Edward Jones Reserve. There's and the, the only thing I can tell you at this point in time, this would be a terrible time to sell. <laughs> All the market numbers were down today, so I'm we should have. We should have sold. We should have sold three months ago. But no one's no one's selling today. Well, there are some people that are forced to sell that have to cut their loss. That's when you that's when you take a beating in the stock market. Mm -hmm. When you when you're forced to sell. Yeah. Sure. In, in in keeping with that idea that we're taking public money now, we need to, if you're you're still not a, a public agency. But I believe things like not approving minutes or even tabling them need to be done by motion, not just see yeah. Okay, certain. Um, I will. I will. Uh, I'll take a motion to table the approval of the minutes of April. I'll so move. Uh, Dave moves. I'll second. And Mike seconds. Um, all those in favor of tabling approval of the minutes, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Hi. That's a unanimous seconds. Thank you for your patience and double duty here. Okay. And I'll note jo Carlos back uh, July 5 to check his computer. Here we go. Um, all right. There's also, um, I think this would fall under financial reports, and I may just entertain another motion here. Um, so I work in Montpelier 10 months a year, and I've been able to get over and, and get signatures on here um, on this and that. And staff discussed um, Zach being the signer, adding Zach as a signer for preferred checking. Is that accurate? And that That's would, right. I think that would require a motion as well. Um, so we can go forward with that. We'll get the new docs in, and then I'll I'll just make the request with the bank to add Zach to preferred checking. But I don't want to do that unless we have board approval of that. And, uh, any discussion on that? Um, how the team came to see Zach as, as the obvious person, or I've entertained motion or a conversation. Uh, yeah, how did you guys financial? It's, it's pretty obvious. I'd be curious to hear how the decision was reached. Yeah, sure. I think that um, this will be 
something that is touched upon more in detail in, in just a minute here. But um, I think that Zach um, needs probably most of, if not all of the equipment purchases. And so and as far as you know, who's able to sign a check, um, Zach's also often working with Jin as far as like uh, overseeing the mileage reimbursements, things like that, and part time stuff. So, I think how we broke it up was I cut the check. So, I'm sure, entering sure. the info into QuickBooks. And then, so rather than have me sign it, or so then I think Christopher can review it. And then Zach also will review it and he signs it. So, kind of to divide up the do a little checks and balances in terms of like, I'm not going to cut the checks and sign the checks. It will be someone else. So, that was also how we kind of came to it too. Or we just roll with that arrangement. Uh, I could acceptable. I could entertain a motion. I don't have any arguments against what you just said, Jim. And it sounds both practical and fair. And there's some checks and balances within it. So I'm moving that we accept that description of how uh, that is going to handle in the money and treat signatures. I share the three steps with the people on the staff. Thank you, Dave. So move stats act to prefer checking as a signatoire. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you, Chad. Seconds. And that's the question. Is is that process that you just described, Jen, is that actually a a written policy that Zach doesn't enter his own checks into QuickBooks to buy something ever. So there's always two sets of eyes on a purchase. So it, when we divided tasks in the interim, I took over entry into QuickBooks. So he doesn't have a login. He okay. doesn't have, uh, I mean, he has access to the reports because that's all shared, but he doesn't actually have any um, access. Yeah, it just, so I guess what I'm hearing is that it's a, almost like a protocol or a policy of how bills get made with multiple sets of eyes. It's not as simple as adding somebody to sign. Yeah, and I was really just impressed with how this trio came to realize Zach ought to be the one. Given, Chris, you're on the Youth Documentary Lab, you're doing payroll and cutting checks. Like, there's a... Every time I've thrown something at you guys, it's just been a real logic to how you've come up with them. That's why this I, is the how to second that too. I think that part of like updating our policies and procedures and stuff like that could be officialized. Because an auditor yeah. is going to want to see that. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, um, it's that same policy for every single thing. Sure. Yeah. As long as it isn't causing having like a written out procedure would help so that there is a, a standard uh, for it that is done every time. And so it isn't necessarily bogging things down either right. for having like there's like the one person who isn't around enough to but it doesn't sound like that's an issue and it's been working well. That's fine. Right. And I'll just be less around the Montclair area this two months as a teacher. I won't be in the Montclair area. So this just Zach's around and uh, there's set size and it's it's got a structure, but yeah, um now that we build it, it is. We can memorialize it policy as well. Um, so we have a movement and a second to add Zach to preferred checking. Further discussion, or shall I call a question? All, right. All those in favor of adding Zach to preferred checking, please indicate by he's oh, indicate by that's <laughs> The owl, and that's why it's so long. Oh, okay. And it's, I'm perfectly comfortable. So, you've been hearing okay? Sort of. Yeah. I can, I can hear most everybody. It's a little hard to hear Chad. Got it. Got it. Um, did you hear the, the, the motion? Yeah. Chad's act of preferred checking. All yeah. right. Uh, that's Dave. Chad seconded. Um, all those in favor of adding act of preferred checking. Please indicate by saying aye um, and opposed. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Um, 
And on the financials, um, does staff want to draw our attention or Mike or anyone to some of the information we have on uh, the uh, uh, budget actual versus where or where? So in terms of um, budget versus actuals, I guess since I generated. So um, I am getting used to how Orca does QuickBooks and puts in stuff. So there may be some, I did work really hard to try to get the um, the salaries. I think that's usually a journal entry from the accountant. So it's been, I don't know if you remember the budget versus actuals from previous, it was all in the Ask My Accountant um, column or row, but so I've hopefully done the journal entries right, and I think it's the salaries now should be a little bit more reflective of where we are in the budget, or I should say the compensation line. But at the same time, I'll throw out there, and you know, the accountant did make some adjustments. So next month or next time, there may be some adjustments in coding, but I think for the most part, it's he said I, it was pretty it was pretty accurate. So great, um, and I think. So one of the things I, oh, this is the executive, the, the director's report, I'll, I'll, I'll be yeah, hush. <laughs> um, all right, um, anything to report on? Edward Jones just kind of took a small hit. I'm hoping it's not too terrible a hit. Not too yeah. terrible a hit. <laughs> no, if anything, we're, we are up a little bit from a month ago and we probably, are down with today's news, is right? Yeah, I would bet that today we're 302, but I haven't checked that. So, now, once again, this reflects some fairly conservative kinds of investments. <laughs> I have a, my, my own portfolio has swings more wildly than this, but this comes from years and years. Of, of boards that simply did not believe in stocks and bonds, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, you moved us off the money market monthly, monthly maturing 12 money market accounts well, that would monthly mature. And and, 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 and up the tail end of those days. And and frankly, that's because that did not exist any longer. That was a good market when you could get like 7% on a CD. Mm -hmm. But you, you, can't, you, yeah, yeah. Can, you can't get 1% on a CD these days. Uh, CDs may be coming back, however. Mm -hmm. Depends on how long this inflation is going to last. And uh, Sure. I mean, that could come back. I don't know if we would really want it to come back. <laughs> but, uh, it would be a sign of other things. Yep. Um, so I think we need to talk a little bit just for the people that are listening. We're doing a kind of talking this level. Good, good audio check. Sue, how are we doing? Good. Better? Yeah. And the AC fine. off. AC off probably helped a lot too. Okay. Thanks though. Um, more, more commentary on the uh, financials or questions or a motion to accept the finances and move on to the director's report. Well, we've got the, we've got the budget here. And of course, I am simply am not prepared at all or in any way. I don't know the if there's any concerning numbers that jump out at people. That's always a good, always <laughs> good fodder. If there's something that's got a burn rate faster than the faster than the no big surprises about halfway year. through the year. Right. There's no big surprises on the Okay. No, I'm asking. <laughs> I, I'm seeing this for the first time, and normally this kind okay, of stuff okay. requires a bit of study. All right. Well, I'll just study. Which, which I am not, you know. All uh, right. I'm aware of big pluses. Uh, the documentary lab is over budget by seven grand. Is that covered by grants or are we just in a funny place where all the upfront expenses of? Um, I think some of that was like a strange carryover from the grant from last summer mm -hmm. that um, is my understanding. 
So that wasn't that twenty three thousand that we were awarded last year. Uh, not, I know that not all of the money came back because that was a reimbursement grant by the time. Sorry, uh, by the time the twenty twenty two budget was prepared. So, got it. Any other numbers that people want to pick on or? We are about halfway through the year. And I do see a lot of 50s and 40s and some 30s even. Any legal expenses for the fun of it? Mm -hmm. Legal looks quiet. That's a good thing. <laughs> if you want to see budgets go crazy, legal is usually a good place to look. Um. So I would uh, entertain a motion to accept the financials. Some if questions are exhausted. Uh, Mike D. So moves. Second then. Except Rachel seconds. And all those in favor of accepting the financial report, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And, and opposed, and that's unanimous. Thank you, folks. Um, we're up with the director's report, which is um, an, an interim at this point. That's right. Um, so this is the June 28th, 2022, uh, what we're calling the interim executive director's report. Um, it's printed here, and I can just going to kind of read through it. Um, but please stop me. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we added a few sections to it kind of based on the um, legacy executive director report. Um, so production, in addition to regular meetings and productions, we recently completed live streaming of local school graduations and concerts. Um, Jen and Zach completed a live streaming test and site visit at the State House lawn um, with success. Uh, testing the uh, live streaming capability there. Um, Orca Media supported uh, a new community producer named Julia Wilk um, in a full video production and coverage of Shakespeare, Vermont's Romeo and Juliet performance. So that was really great. Um, lots of cross promotion there too with their new group. Um, Sean is helping with editing. Um, That's new staff. Sean is relatively new, yeah. yeah. Um, we're training two new part-time camera operators. Um, Sean is at 20 hours plus variable. He's probably falling between 20 to 30 because he's also helping out with the um, the youth program, the summer camp. Yeah, so he's right. actually turning out to be very versatile and he's um, he can do editing. He can, he's very proficient with the camera. And so he does a lot of the different types of shoots. So it's, um, I think we've been, Trying to keep them busy yeah, <laughs> to keep them happy. Really and sorry to cut you off, Chris. You were speaking of two new trainees. Yes, there's two new um, part-time camera operators, and we could kind of expand on them a little bit in the staff uh, section of the uh, later on. But I'll just let you know that we hired uh, one uh, young person from who's currently at the Central Vermont Career Center. And then one who's here just for the summer from New England Institute of Technology. Um, yeah, then I'll go back over here. So um, Orca Media is a sponsor and also will be live streaming the upcoming July 3rd Independence Day celebration. So you may have seen our logo on some of their materials, which is great. Um, so moving to outreach and community partnerships, uh, Orca Media was a nonprofit sponsor for Montpelier Pride Fest, um, along with covering and broadcasting the event. Um, Orca Media is sponsoring the upcoming summer screening series presented by Vermont Production Collective at the Christ Church in Montpelier. Um, David Littlefield of Vermont PBS, uh, which is now Vermont Public has moved into Rob's former office um, and out of edit one. 
And so we're hoping to establish a more permanent relationship and residency with uh, the producer director, David Littlefield um, from Vermont Poet. So that um, also leads to uh, that I, Christopher, recently met with Eric Cord, the director of content content partnership at Vermont Public to discuss potential collaboration around new youth media education programs between Orphan Media and Vermont Public, um, looking specifically at schools and connecting youth to the State House legislative sessions. Um, and I am scheduled to meet with Scott Finn, CEO of Vermont Public in July to continue that conversation. So it's exciting. Um, the Orca Media Make TV camp started up on Monday. So we have a full house here this week, which is kind of why things are rearranged a little bit and why we're in this space, which is nice and colorful and bright. I think it's kind of nice to be over here. How many are here? We have 10, um, which is surprisingly, uh, it's pretty good. We've been able to, we have three staff um, supporting them. Um, actually, all of us are here really. So all four of us, sorry, Sean is, is also here all week. And um, yeah, it's been great. So they're building uh, programs with little segments and they decided to do some parody news um, and parody TV and small segments. So they're working outside, inside in the studio, they're all over. So so how 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 many days has the summer program been this in, in effect? Uh, just started on Monday, nine okay. to three on Monday. So, so it's a full day camp. Day. Yeah, this is a full day donation based or sliding scale uh, at donation uh, camp and um, kind of looking at the 11 to 14 year olds and also looking at our, this is really our I guess in a while, it would be our first like full day camp um, outside of the Vermont Youth Documentary Lab being more of an intensive for the older kiddos. So this is kind of, uh, this is great. And we had we have a lot of engagement and a ton of excitement. So they they even wanted to do a sleepaway camp, they said, so they, want, they really want to be here and they're enjoying themselves here. So it's it's awesome. So um, moving on, the Vermont Youth Documentary Lab recently won an award from the Freedom of and Unity Filmmakers Contest on White River Junction for a uh, Vermont Youth uh, Media, or sorry, a Youth Media Project produced last summer. So they, that was a cash award, which is awesome, and I'm distributing it among the five participants. Okay. So I, have we I, seen? I think I spoke to somebody's mother today, and oh, really? she was very proud of her oh, son. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe, Maybe it's Katarina, I think. Okay. Was yeah. the award-winning uh, production filmed? In the, like, it was the watching? award. Yeah, it's it's online and it's on our. Uh, should be on. I know it's on <laughs> archive and it's on. What, um, what title should we be looking for? Um, if you just look at our the YouTube page that, that it's it's called um, it's actually called Untitled, <laughs> and then in parentheses it's called Street Art and Public Art in Montpelier. So it was a short little kind of experimental oh. video journalism piece, and it won the uh, experimental film award. Right. So, so how many how many minutes did it run? It was, oh. It's only I think it's eight minutes i forget it was last summer and i it's, it's been a while since i've seen it now it feels like but i think it's five to eight minutes other credits on it and yeah was, and so do the yeah. kids that did it get mentioned um, oh yeah yeah and then yeah so they'll okay. um and then we so it was in my rejection just last week mm -hmm. and i and i sent out kind of a we found out i guess like two days before so i sent out a notice to all of the families and the participants and invited them to go and accept the award on on the behalf of the, the program and so one of a, one of them did tiger and um so that was great him and his mother got to go and watch pictures it was nice. yes, all the questions around gender what's yeah. the gender base of the tent of the tent here yeah we have uh eight boys one non-binary person and one girl so Okay, I just wonder for the time here this week. Yeah. And then youth doc labs coming up. It's That's coming up structure. That'll be um we're still playing with that, like figuring out what works best because we heard different things about weekends last summer. So we're doing six Fridays this um this summer, and that's coming up July 15th. Does Sean have a surname? Sean does have a surname. It's uh, Temple. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sean, and uh, Sean is also a really talented filmmaker on his own. His partner and uh, make uh, 
I would say horror films. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and they describe it as as uh, something else though. It's feminist story. Uh, yeah, but it's 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 like not suspense. There's something, but yeah, it's definitely yeah. good quality. It's, it's really fun. great. Yeah, yeah very talented. <laughs> we don't have any chance to claim credit for the young genius that just got a job at Beta. By any chance? Who is that? I think for you, thirty-two. What's his name? It had uh, the world has a picture of him. Oh, he's like involved we, in almost it, everything. Is he involved in work at all? I don't. I'm not aware of the story. So, robotics yeah. is trouble. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder whether he's been connected with us at all. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we've had a ton of engagement with U32 over the years. So I that, think it's that would be. I don't know it was in the world newspaper. I could check it yeah. out. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Before we move forward, there's one yeah. thing that I just wanted to move back to sure. the. Uh, uh, we talked about. Uh, it's awesome you're talking to Eric and Scott. Um, and I was curious if if I would throw into the pot to reach out to Amy at the Arts Council. Sure. Um, about the school programs, because so I know that she says that they've had some trouble getting some of their programs going, especially trying to do. They're trying to do. Uh, I forget what the name of the program is, where they have like someone uh, in residence, oh, a yeah. filmmaker in residence in the schools, and they've had trouble finding people to to oh, fill wow. those those uh, positions. And I think that that's what they did that big, you know, that experimental dance thing that they've been screening around this the past quarry? summer. Quarry, not the quarry project. Uh, that it's uh, Lucas's thing. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, they just played it in Burlington. It is a thing that they did in collaboration with schools and filmmakers oh, cool. and okay. bands. And they had someone just, I haven't watched it yet, but it was described to me. I was like, that sounds very confusing. I will have to watch it. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, one of the things that David Littlefield and I talked about. Ex-votive. That's what it's called. Okay, cool. I'll check that out. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. Let me, yeah. I'm going to look. Like it was it the Media Factory did it? Or? They, I, I think that the Media Factory was involved and there was a, a, dance multimedia artist who was working in a school maybe awesome. up in um uh i can't think of the town it's just north of here um but yeah it was kind of very interesting in callus oh uh, cool well i will say that david littlefield and eric ford have both uh been that's one of the ideas that we've kind of been talking about loosely is like doing in residence programs you know we've done some recent uh, media arts education consulting projects with um, Orange Southwest and with Plainfield. Um, and so the idea of like being a little bit more present, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's somebody from Orca or somebody from uh, Vermont Public or a collaboration between the two is a, a great idea. Because well, especially yeah, they're the looking for that. Yeah. And they, and they, it would, my problem in trying to uh, ID people for it is that it definitely would want to be. Someone who's maybe a little bit newer and welcoming, and would would the project would benefit from like right, right. youth energy and oh, in true. a way that a lot of people that I interact with is like that is like adds too much chaos. Right, right. there's too much at stake. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just uh, it jumped out to me when you were talking about that. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. She well, told me before. I'll definitely keep that in mind when I meet with Scott Finn. I think that that's a, a great idea to keep. So there might be yeah. some funding behind it. Yeah, definitely. I think that that's one of the the great things about doing consulting work with schools is that schools do have some extra cash right now, and we they were all able to contribute to us. Mm -hmm. So. That is, was really nice. Is Eric Ford a possibility for us to have a meeting with down here in one of our meetings? Yeah, actually, yeah. That one of the things that he's been wanting to do is come visit us and and just kind of get more I familiar think we with. Should just have a meeting. That's so, a great. Idea. He's he's been doing. Uh, just let me know that he's been doing little visits to the Burlington Community Media Centers, but is very unfamiliar with the rest of the state as far as like what community media looks like. And so he was excited, but very familiar with like the content of working media. So I think coming into our space and hanging out is a good idea. Yeah, Eric and Scott were both very much, uh, Orca was brought into their minds and, and a present um, thing to them as a result of broadcasting the, during the pandemic, the uh, press conferences of the governor. Oh, great. And they found it an invaluable resource. I, I, taught, I met up with both of them at a film fest in Burlington a while ago and they um, both express that, and we're both actually very interested in talking with Orca about the uh, uh, transpar transparency and archival um, uh, storage of, of the proceedings, the meetings, and the, all of the stuff. Where does it go? How is it searching? And I would think, if I were Eric, 
that uh, it would be great to have a place that had the material, the equipment, and the idea, and was already enacting the things of, of that ilk that actually could come to schools or uh, superintendents or people in the Burlington area and explain how and why we do what we do. And just, uh, so it opened up that whole can of possibilities. And don't forget that Vermont Public has 53 million that we, yeah. that was our spectrum that got sold. Right. That's so a, that they so can capitalize point. some of these projects. They definitely do, yeah. The mention of Vermont Arts Council. Do we know the state of our grant? I right. do know, um, I do the, know they're starting to roll out. We didn't get the di uh, digital capacity grant. Okay. So there's, the, there's going to be a few things that in here that just since we have been pretty busy that I may have neglected to. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's one of them. Unfortunately, we did not. Um, but I am. Is that a form thinking. letter or they say weaknesses in the app? Do they critique the application so, or what do you get um, back? They do. What's great is that they had an outside party like review the, I think there was a, you were kind of involved at a different end, but there was a 150 or so applicants and only 40 awards. So, you know, that it was pretty competitive and <clears throat> they did send us some written feedback, which we reviewed. I know that the Vermont after school had a very similar situation where there was a 200 applicants and we didn't get that one either. And that was very helpful to see that the, a lot of the focus, and I won't digress too much, but a lot of the um, the focus was around like just what um, our experience with like professional development has been. So I think that that is something that we're really excited to because we've done zero like diversity, equity, and inclusion trainings. We've done very little as far as just like uh, I mean you know, when, especially working with youth, they, they want to make sure that you've gone through some kind of like mental health, um, professional developments that you're aware of, you know, a lot of, obviously you're just dipping your toes in those things. But, um, so I think that that is a huge for me looking at the response and feedback from some of these grants and like yeah, this yeah. learning process to applying to the grants and getting feedback is looking at professional development opportunities to just, yeah, build us up as, uh, work and media if, so that's, that's if, the, if you well, ask them directly, um, they will give you specific feedback on your grant. That's right. Yeah. And luckily, it's been written. So um, most of them, and I think I could, um, for both cases, if you're interested in reading it, I could share with the board the feedback. So you can see my application and you can see the written feedback if it's worth mm -hmm. taking a look at. It's worth it. And it's these worth are. Yeah. From, that would be uh, Vermont After School and, and the um, Arts Council. And yeah. Vermont Arts Council. Thank you. Two big ones that we recently applied for. They have announced and published the, the people who were awarded. Oh, have they? Okay, yeah. great. They, they did yesterday. Well, yeah. <laughs> I saw I saw GDR got it, so I wondered if we heard. Yeah, and that was really great too because I I wrote them a, a little letter of support. So great. Um. Would, would this be an appropriate place to share your meeting with Katie of ECFA? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, um, we're going to go into the strategic plan section next, and I think that that's a good kind of segue, is that um, if you don't know uh, the recent news that Vermont College of Fine Arts is moving their summer residencies to Colorado Springs, Colorado, and what that means is that they are actively looking uh, to sell 10 of their 11 buildings and only keep the college hall building. So we had a, a meeting with the CFO of Vermont College of Fine Arts, um, who is also our liaison to our tenant relationship. When it was really great, she reached out to us and wanted to make sure that you know we were understood what was going on as tenants, right? And um, there's seven total tenants, um, current tenants, and so it was just like an update on what is the information that's available and kind of giving us, you know clearing up some of the misinformation maybe, and then also letting us know that she does really value us as tenants and will advocate for us in any kind of um, uh, sales, yeah, negotiation, like making sure that there is some, you know, 
Right. So something what I've read about yeah. it, it said they were looking to sell or lease the other space, but I had not seen that they were definitely, are they definitely looking to sell all the other buildings? I think so, yeah. I mean, if if leasing is involved, that would probably be the minority of the of the 10 buildings. I don't know. No, I hint that anybody's particularly they said they can't say anything thing. at this point. Yeah, they because it's okay. all no, but they really give a hint that you pick up uh Right, yeah, like maybe well, so, technically, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, a week. No, yeah, there wasn't anything. Yeah. Okay. Well on on that note, you're about to face two solid years of East State Street Street construction, actually nearly impassable, uh total gutting of that road. And the, the state similarly has a lot of unused real estate down in in the city proper that they're considering how how to manage. So uh don't I would encourage you to think flexibly about sure. Not a wonderful time to be investing in real estate. Yeah, right. Maybe something to think about. Um I asked Katie on the oh. email if if stone was its own parcel. Right. She said she was gonna get back to us. Yeah. But, but that she said it's taxed with the building next door. Mm -hmm. So I was confused by that that the taxing and the parceling may not be. A lot, right? And I, that, that's how I read I she's, how she was going. I don't quite know either, and and I think that she's she said she would clarify and get back to us. So I think, um, yeah, if you don't know, the uh, Autumn School is a tenant just in the building next door. So she did foresee the situation that could occur where all of the like maybe one or two are commercial buildings, and the tenants are asked to consolidate. So that's, but that was of course just like her kind of. Discussing sure. possibilities Thinking down yeah. the road, and the tenants, I guess, are really only in these two buildings. I believe they're the state has offices over there too, right? Right. So maybe they have a yeah. You're right. They have a state tenant. Um, yeah. and then there's talk of housing, and this would be tough to convert. Um, yeah, I think so. Versus so the the great opportunity it, for condos could, in the other buildings, yeah. it could, however, be very affordable housing for single people that have uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Converting a dorm, right? You got to wonder how that ends up looking. Yep. Um, yeah, but I mean, it could be done, and it does keep folks out of the snow. Sure. Oh, and, absolutely. And, well, we can keep with the price of fuel oil doing what the price of fuel oil is doing. Probably easier to a lot of people yeah. are going to have to start thinking, are they going to pay the rent? Are they going to buy food? Or are they going to get fuel? Yeah. Sure. And this is on some central heating thing where it's always super warm during the winter. <laughs> it's very warm in here. Yeah. Um, it's just stopped being warm. Like a, a, yeah. a month ago. Good old fashioned steam heat. Yeah. So we could keep our eyes and ears open. For, uh, yeah. What could be a backup if we had to have yeah, and, and our lease it takes us to the... 2025. Exactly. Gardens. And I think that that's something to just kind of, she said that she's very much wanting to make sure that all of the information is available and that she's transparent with us throughout the process. And of course, you know, recognizing the current lease that we have and there's, you know, I don't think that we would be blindsided by any means when she's, yeah. The lead times yeah. there. Great. So, um, as far as we also have added the a strategic plan section. Um, so Christopher, Jin, and Zach have been um, researching and working on a proposal for a horizontal uh, sociocratic leadership model, which we will be presenting during the new business portion of the meeting tonight. Um, so that's exciting. And recently, Christopher, Jin, and uh, Michael met with Chris Wood, the board chair of Rural Vermont, to discuss their experience trans transitioning from a conventional executive director-led nonprofit organization to a horizontal sociocratic leadership model. Um, Christopher and Jin recently met with Nathan Suter, um, a local nonprofit consultant, to begin planning a formal strategic planning project. So this is a conversation that just got started when Rob was here when um, and kind of was put on hold. Can I so, his name? Nathan Again. Suter, um, S-U-T-E-R. Thank you. So this would fit within, um, you know, looking at everything really together, looking at um, this new leadership model, looking at, um, I think, a lot of the things that we've been kind of asking for as staff, um, which is 
policy and procedure related, um, transparency and, and equity and pay, things like that. Um, yeah, and of course, uh, planning for the future financially too, and and kind of looking at our what do we vision for ourselves? What's our you know maybe we looking at our mission? Kind of just a, a, a robust uh, strategic planning process, and, and kind of embracing that with the board um, as well. Did, is Chris Wood the board chair of what Paul Costello just left? Oh, I don't know. No, the he rural was, remark is different than uh, is public, public, assets? Was, uh, public, public assets. assets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. He, I think he's the assistant board Vermont. chair of rural Vermont. Okay. Did oh, he say he was there? assistant or chair? <clears throat> anyway, oh, I, I don't want to go back to Polina and they were down on Berry Street for. Okay. Yeah, because well, they do some nice and work in some of the small towns. They do, and he's also the executive director of Mail in South Royal. Oh yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. Building, building a local economy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're good acronym. Acronym. And they're a very small scale nonprofit, but but they're doing well. Doing for the smallness of their yeah, both in Vermont and and Vail. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So that's super exciting. He left us with a ton of great resources uh, to dig <clears> into, <throat> and um, just a lot of insight into like any hiccups in their process and just the things that everyone is, you know, really enthusiastic to embrace the change uh, regarding. So, yeah. So we have uh, just a, few, a few more sections to look at. So staff, uh, Morgan Media has a new intern through the Vermont Youth uh, Employment Program. So that program pays for their time here. The intern uh, is Liam, and they are working to support daily operations, learn video and audio production for event coverage, manage equipment, um, do a handful of miscellaneous equipment room things that have been on, you know, Zach and Jin's list for a while. And then uh, they're also producing and directing their own studio show and creating new uh, signs, hand-drawn, illustrate. they're an illustrator, so they've applied their skills to creating some new signs for permanent signs for our equipment room and office. You may have seen some new art popping up. Um, is Liam a uh, high school age? Liam is actually a freshman or a sophomore in college. And they study French up in Quebec. Does he have a surname? Uh, Liam uses they, them, and uh, they... Okay. Their last name is I'm oh, sorry. Uh, Riddle. Riddle. Yeah. Name Riddle. Yes. Um, so to speak. <laughs> and so uh, again, we've hired two um, new camera operators, uh, as I mentioned before, and we are still looking for camera operators. So spread the word. That's in you can, please. Um uh, about that. Sure. Is it? <clears throat> worth considering possibly as part of that strategic plan that camera operators be compensated according to skills. I mean, we've got actually we've got uh, some some pretty rough operators out there. And right. Well, that's good that you mentioned that. Um, that's something that is unfolding actively right now is um, a compensation policy that better, um, first of all, that reflects the cost of living in central Vermont. And just updating what our part timers, you know, how we pay them and how we, and, and the scale, which incentivize higher, yeah. Yeah. So all of that is coming out very three, soon. After three months, they get some kind of raise, and after six months, they get another kind of raise. Yeah, and I think that also recognizing the folks that have been with us for a long time, and you know, and, and, and if they if they if they don't get a, if they don't get any raises at all in six months, you might want to consider using them in some other capacity. If at all. Right, right. Yeah, that's a good point. And I also think that part of the issue on the on their end might be, you know, you're gonna have high turnover if, if the, the rate is low that you're paying and the hours are already infrequent, which you know sometimes we can't control. You know, we don't have a ton of hours that we can guarantee to folks. Um and this, but, was, this was a, this this was like a also a, like a half-started initiative as Rob was leaving. Very much, yeah. So you guys have figured out a new range 
don't know if you want to get into nitty gritty since we're on topic. Oh, because it's gonna coming be, up later. Well, it's part of the to do portion exactly. of the director's report. So um, we briefly talked about it and we did want to, we were going to either save it for new business as well, just because we did come up with a, um, we, what we did was we looked at the type of productions that our cam operators do. And so at the very last page, sorry, I, or not very last, but at the end of the packet, you'll see a, um, a diagram of like that. Yes. <laughs> so what we did was we broke it down. To, oh, sorry. Sorry. We broke it down in terms of the events and then kind of started to standardize it to in terms of what skills that they the camera operators might know and then as they progress mastery through these types of production and knowing the op, the equipment they go down in the skill and they start to go into a new batch of um money so um, well, that's so, down to the 50 cents yeah, down to the so, quarter Look but at we that. Were, yeah. so yeah. we were trying to make it very standard in terms of like okay they know how to do a mixer and what does that mean that means that they're writing so we tried to um be able to quantify these skills and where they might fall in their pay structure so that it gives them like if they keep as they master each one and learn new skills, it'll keep them going so that it's not necessarily be sometimes, sometimes like if they're very proficient and that like, I think Sean like knows a lot of stuff. And so I, so we, that's our initial and what we wanted to do was present it to the board and see how it looked and then present it to the staff. I think we're planning on having a camera operator meeting in July and to just, you know, let them know this is what's going on. And also to show them this is what, cause we had, what we had done is raised everyone to a new starting salary that was the same for everyone so that we can start now placing people based on their skills or sk the mastery of certain skills. And then there also there's a longevity piece and um, that we would add in. And I was thinking like we would take the number of years times like the average cola through the last five years and say for every year. And that would be a standard way of saying you know, so for every year you get a certain percent. And then once everyone gets placed, then we can start talking about, okay, well, every year there might be a different COLA percent. Cause I think mm -hmm. word on the street this year's COLA is going to be huge. No, <laughs> it's, you know, it's going to be more than what it was yeah. kind of thing. So I, um, that's where that might be the piece that continues on, but we wanted to start placing people cause we put everyone at 16 to start them off. But then now we've, we broke out all the tasks and the duties and the skills that we see within the production side that we could. Um, and we also did a layer for post-production and a layer for studio shows. And then, so I think ultimately the highest just based on skill set is, I think it breaks up to be 16 is your starting salary, 20 is your, like you've mastered all those skills. And then, we then, you know, that's just your camera operators. We There's always conversations about maybe there's a new level that comes in. And this is something that, you know, still kind of in the works, like a production assistant where they would start to lead and teach the camera operators and be, and so that would be outside of the progress from the camera operators to, so, I mean, there's definitely conversations to be had about, you know, what are the new levels right now? We've just been like, let's just try to get the camera operators, you know, a better understanding of what skills that we are breaking out the sure. productions defining the lab um, so it's a could little you, oh, could you Susan. email that to me yes i i got stuck in this point i was yeah, gonna, you know, you're going to chair i was no, that's okay i'm fine so, so i was going to upload to the um, i'll email it to you i can bring you a chair no no i'm fine you're i'm good? i would say you've been sitting all day i feel bad because i was going to i was going to email that to you Sue, because i knew you, were, you would want to see it yeah and i'll just add that uh it i'm excited to like get all the camera operators together too because that's something that we haven't been able to do and they can meet each other and you know we can get hear feedback from them on everything from like equipment to like this compensation policy I like this a lot. I think it's so organized and I'm always impressed with the way you put things together. Um, how, will it be difficult to slot people into this? Do you feel like this is going to fit pretty naturally? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how many operators are you managing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that, I was looking at a huge yeah. number to actually yeah. like sit down and do all the math for that. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Some more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love yeah. that kind of thing. I love organizing. Yeah. Like it. I, it's, been, it's been a long time coming, so it's really it's yeah. great to to see. Yeah. We did a like a stopgap measure that you may be aware of to bump them up, but it's still not enough. And it's like we want to make sure that we can compensate everyone based on you know real world things. So yeah. Real world now, COLA could stand for a lot of things. The cost of leaving America. <laughs> yeah. There's like an immigration to Canada. Go, go yeah. ahead. Oh, of course, sure. leaving for an abortion. In sure. It sure does. Uh, yeah. I, I watched some of the, um, I watched some of the Norwich live stream and I thought production values were like, boom, boom, boom. Like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, they were great. Good. great. Um, they were doing a Ukraine thing that we live streamed. Oh, yeah, recently. And uh, it was clean. It was really nice. Yeah, I think that our hybrid meeting and live stream stuff has really been down to a science. Oh, yeah. And I think that more people are asking us, whether that's from the governors, but I think like we've gotten. I think in terms of like the live stream, so we've started to do some congressional forums live streaming. And I think even like the Zoom, so the League of Women Voters, I think it's on Thursday, they're having it virtual, but they're like, oh, can you just stream it for us? And, you know, so even when we're not necessarily there, they're looking to us to help out with the live stream. So our testing out at the State House lawn was always like, it's exciting because now we know we can successfully stream because we did a the climb out of darkness. So we did a, a Zoom, a hybrid meeting for one of the organiz organizations there and um, was able to successfully Zoom out on the lawn. So it was always kind of like, oh, what's the internet like? And that, <laughs> that, so it's been nice to be able to kind of go to different locations and map out what the internet and the um, cool. Zoom and live streaming capabilities might be. Great. So you're going to use a lawn um, on Independence Day from the lawn? So we're actually for the July 3rd, we're back in that spot, but yeah, apparently where we always are for the July 3rd over in front of what we used to be La Brioche. Um, so we'll be okay, live streaming there, from there sure. okay. again for July 3rd. Um, Here's the schedule and nobody wants to see it. Oh yeah, it just came out. Yeah, and I, I just got an email from Dan at Monthly Live. So um, yeah, I'm excited. Great. Well, so um, can I throw a comment in on your yeah, please. Your, skin, your uh, you were talking about equity inclusion and cost of living, etc. And while I'm not identifying a source of funds right now, but I think you need to be looking at adding about five dollars an hour to each of these categories. Oh, I agree. Yeah. People, because you're not going to be able to retain people that you're not giving them. 22 23 dollars yeah. an hour with yes yeah. the minimal cost of living yeah. around here so i think this, this just gets us to a better place yeah. than we've been it's yeah. not the end point okay. sure. yeah and as this is a is a model these numbers could all yeah. come up yeah um great so yeah the finances we received our comcast check for uh, 106,883 mm -hmm. six um, and check was that back above 100 mm -hmm. and then uh the check from the state came in for Twelve thousand five hundred. So that was that initial appropriation. Um, there are a couple of bigger purchases happening: a replacement workstation at, at one here for around two thousand two hundred. Um, and we will be re renewing our Telview maintenance agreement for seven thousand three hundred. Annual. Yeah, that's an annual. Yeah, it's annual. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of locked into that. So that's how they run the agreement. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Big news from the statewide regional stuff. Uh, the governor signed the budget, which included a $600,000 appropriation request for FY23 for the 24 community media centers in Vermont. So that'll work just like the last one, except the last one I think was around 300. So this is 600, exciting. So we'll get another uh, check around 24, 25,000. Um, the same distribution mechanism. As yeah, it'll go, it'll go to Van and then just directly out. Yeah, or no, sorry, it comes from the state. Yeah, it came from the state. In yeah. terms of how I remember the last one, everyone got equal regardless of the size. Or regardless what, of the yeah, name. Van. We've decided to for now. And there was talk of maybe yeah. the second check would be divvied up in a different I, criteria, but it sounds like it'll just be. My understanding is it's it's going to be the same, yeah. Okay. And, and then going forward, hopefully there could be more money involved. Um, and 
spend might be different based on budgets or something like that. Um, in in that regard, I've stepped down or haven't renewed my contract with Vermont Access Networks as their production project coordinator. So I'm going to continue on just with the advocacy committee, but not as a staff person. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, I'm glad you made that decision. Yeah. Thank you. It might be too many hats under one organization. It's been, yeah. And I also have two kids for those of you that don't know that. So, um, so yeah, then brings us to our to-do. So um, yeah, these are kind of an update from the to-do that has been hanging on uh, to this report, um, creating a video explaining how to produce an access show um, that was added to you know my list and we're bringing that back. Um, and the, I think what you have on the printout is actually like the language. We may have updated the language a little bit. But that's the actual language from the past report. So this one's updated a little bit. Sorry. So um, updating policies and procedures. No progress yet there, but that's once again it, um, something that we're enthusiastic about and willing to really dive into soon. Um, and then a plan for an open house events at the new facilities that's been tabled, of course. Um, and, and I think we are looking at getting serious about that this fall, The which is also related to what's going on here on the campus. The film residency in October will be the last Montpelier residency. And then it's a big goodbye to- And it's film. And it's film. So it might be fun to connect. I sent a recent email to Brad Heck, who I've been uh, you know, corresponding with in, in multiple regards about maybe doing something, maybe we have a shared party or something, maybe we have our open house and then they have a party and, you know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, rolling day kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, cool. And then, you know, we provided a PA for a dance party they had last residency. So things like that are, it's been a nice connection. So that's it for the report. Thank you. For listening. Thank you. Thank you. Floor, floor for questions or accept the report? Floor for questions. I heard noise on the screen. Yeah. I move to accept the report. No, I just wanted to say thank you because it was oh. very, very comprehensive. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, comment, not a question. You got it. And we do have a comment over here that I neglected to. It, the website update is still in the works, so that is something that was also tabled with the. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. So I would just add that. That's on your list. It's That's a problem. little of the. Uh, I I would like to come in some day, and if you could just show me how to like I like maintain just the board page so we can, like I'll I'll be on the hook for getting a, the old minutes up because I know that was just like severely neglected and it was it's something we got to get on. It's not super user friendly. It, it's a yeah. little bit of work to get. The, I was the, gonna say we can definitely. It's I think your page and once you. It's very easy once you get involved with that particular page. So I think it'll okay. be, if you have yeah, some time, just, we can a narrow it, yeah. lane. Yeah, just stay on that page. <laughs> that that'll be a, a manageable. That's a good idea. Yeah, great. Need to update something. That was Scott Finn too. I haven't. I'm meeting with him in July. Do you have any idea what his background is? Because now that they're Vermont Public, right? It's a big headache that job. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that that was part of his. His uh, idea. leadership was like really, I mean, they, he led the merger, right? So they've been merged officially for, I think, a year, if not okay. more. And the branding, the rebranding is just, was just officially launched the last week. Okay. So, you yeah, know, I know. I, right. Like, but he's, you know, he's been with the organization since he was on the BPR side before. Right. He right? Was, yeah. He was CEO of BPR and he came from West Virginia, as was the executive director from. Uh, Radio uh -huh. and VR films down there, so I don't I don't know too much about him. I mean, he what was really great is that I I didn't mention this, but Scott Finn and Eric Ford joined the last van meeting to kind of well, extend uh, to say that they really want to be involved with good, access and suggest that. And that was their first in person here early May. Uh, so not not the van not meeting. That sorry, they joined the advocacy or the van board meeting that happened over Zoom. After that, yeah, got it. Six and okay, thank you. Um, good, thank you. Move Mike has set the report as presented. Thank you, Mike. D has moved to accept the executive director report. 
Um, I'll second that. And Rachel is seconding. Um, all those in favor of accepting the executive director's report, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Across the board and nay. All right. Uh, hearing none, that's a unanimous. Unanimous. Got it. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, old business. Anyone sitting on old business? I certainly. Well, it was always a strategic planning session that was going to be held. Yeah. And uh, and I did talk to staff about how much they wanted to roll out during ex the executive director's report. But since they had something so fully fleshed out and felt that new business would be the place to really share um, the vision going forward, I'm thinking maybe for old business, I could report out from the, the hiring team. Does that make sense? Because that is clearly the overhanging mm -hmm. um, old business. So uh, Rob's last day was in late May. Um, I want to thank Chad, Rachel, and Sue, and Jen for multiple late Wednesdays in a row um, for really sorting out our criteria mm -hmm. and interviewing um, four people with uh, different skill sets, real strengths here, real strengths there, real, and, you know, kind of fantasizing, could we build Frankenstein's monster out of these four? And just had a lot of really kind of not tunnel vision discussions, good kind of what is the organization need conversations. I really came upon this like Jim, Zach, and Chris were incredibly well together. They're covering all the bases. There's been this ongoing sort of equity issue with salary that, you know, hiring an ED at this amount would, would not solve. Also, the fact that we're running uh, our, our budget this year is, is a dip into savings budget. And we just kind of got to this place about like, a co-directors model and then just threw it to staff and um they just made real numbers come out of it and and real responsibilities come out of it and the fact that they took that initiative was like another testament to like oh this could really work this horizontal management well, structure a three director model so i think that turns the table to new business i think if that's mm -hmm. fairly enough our Report. Uh, anyone on the hiring team want to, to add to what I said? I do think if we discuss individual candidates, we want to go into an executive session, but I think we're beyond. I just want, I'll leave I the wanted door. to say that the name of the model was invented by the Romans. So it's called a triumvirate. Triumvirate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a patriarchal word, but <laughs> I like the, the two, two one split. They could the, just uh, be they. That's right. Remembering my Roman history, it didn't work that well. Oh, I didn't exactly. <laughs> like you know, you could say that something. Yeah, yeah. Well, it only lasted two <laughs> centuries. <laughs> like, geez, <laughs> no, no, it, it it only lasted uh, one emperor. Okay, okay. Uh, Octavius, Octavius uh, became the, Augustus. The Doyles have decided to study Roman history. We are clearly an old business. Right, Irish history is much too flammable. Well, I I, 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 know, I know a thing I know a thing or two about Irish history. <laughs> Okay, it was only one emperor <clears throat> at this triumvirate. Um, so I I would say we are in any any other old business. Anything uh, anyone else from the hiring team wants to add? Uh, or we could flip just into the new business presentation. I'm I'm thinking that I want to go pretty soon, but the only thing I want to add to the whole new business thing. Yeah, once upon a time, I worked in a very dangerous gas plant. Uh, we were working with raw, 100% fluorine. This stuff will set the air on. Mm -hmm. uh, we went through about five laboratory managers in about four months. And then they decided, well, there's maybe something wrong with the job, not something wrong with the guys that we hired to be the managers. 
And the one thing that kind of worked is that everybody started doing the part of that management job that they did well or had a talent for. That was the solution. Was it worked? Mm -hmm. well, shortly after so that, the plant a nice barrel. Shortly yeah. after that, the plant burned down. We have a spare. It wouldn't have done you any good. Oh yeah. Um, Where was that? This was at Alpha, New Jersey, right across the road from Easton, Pennsylvania. Wow. They make the they make many different gases, but the one gas they make that you might have heard of or been exposed to, they make the laser gas that makes the laser eye surgery no. instruments work. Wow. And uh, in order to make that gas, you need to use fluorine. Well, that's my two cents, and I think I will go on. retire. <laughs> okay, thanks for making them, and thanks for the signatures. We'll get them right down to the bank. Very good. And uh, here's a here's a chair. Ah, wow. I like thousands of gold. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Oof. Um, well, stop it, Mike. We'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Good Very to see you. Very good. You try to remember. I am fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, and that's we're going to be uh, election of officers comes up before the next annual report. Yeah, so you'll hear for this sure. leather jacket. Yeah, someone. That's Dave. Oh, that's that's your. I think we have your leather jacket here. Have you been looking for it? I might have yeah, from I'm... from ages ago from yeah, the winter. Boy, okay. Penny, let me just remember it. Gotcha. Well, so yeah, we get uh, we are in new business this. now. Um, it's all business okay. has been exhausted. I heard no other additions, okay. right? New business it is. Yeah, Everyone's it great for the person. Oh, oh no. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> it's it's a, 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 what? No paper bag. Hey, little child. Yeah. Since <laughs> you got stalled on it. So, uh, old business that I think, I don't know whether yeah. Rob ever brought it to your attention, yeah. but there was. Abundant COVID money, ARPA money available in Montpelier as they have real problems with the microphones in the council chamber, with oh. the speakers, with the balance. And I had tried repeatedly to get Rob to put a proposal in a design proposal. Do you, do you know where? So I, I'm on Randolph's yeah. ARPA committee, and they're going to roll out intakes and applications in the fall. Is Montpelier further no, along? Pretty much already done. They've it. already. Well, it saved 400000 for homeless stuff, but. They know the windows open. They're, they're staying with the hybrid meeting concept, and they're having a lot of trouble with people being able to be heard and be seen. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's an area that Orca should propose a model where you find a consultant to get in there and yeah. do the design to solve those problems. Is their window still open, or they they're they'll find, they'll find so there's money around. Right okay. Thank you. Listen. Um, I just make yeah. a note on our old business. And Mike, which committee is it that you're on that where where Randall's having the same problem? Starper committee, the and they're the, the it's a rough timeline of the intake will be a pretty broad question uh, form, and then there'll be sort of qualifying applicants that will be handed sort of much more of a robust. <laughs> Grant process type of thing. That's how Randolph's doing. Each town has the latitude. But what but it's is something... different is that when their equipment doesn't work or isn't balanced, it makes y'all look bad. Mm -hmm. Because y'all are running the sound. And it's and right, right. Who produced it? But and, like, and uh, nobody's in charge, and it needs a, it needs an overhaul. This is an issue also that it's that it's uh, on the minds and priorities of the guys at um, from. What is the new name? What is the new name of PBS? Probably oh, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, with Eric and uh, Scott. Just equipment Both quality, or that's that's the, already there. That's that's already they on were, the built-in. Had uh, was ahead of this, and there was one of the things that they wanted to talk with us about is that they had heard that the um, state house they wanted to try and run it themselves, and they were like, "Oh, right, there could be problems with that." So, um, and part of the parallel. From the the government actually came to them and said, "Hey, we want to do this," and tried to get them to pay for it, um, which they weren't very interested in either. So, right. Mm -hmm. At any rate, so trying to get something going on that front, I would bring them in on that. Yeah, um, sure. 
Thank you. And thanks for your patience, Chris and staff. Uh, I think we're there for new business. Okay, great. We're rolling, so, uh, rolling out the model. Everyone should have a copy of this, but uh, this is the I'm sharing my screen here just so we can look at it together. So um, this is our our pitch for going forward and that we're super excited about and yeah. have been and, and kind of, uh, oh, CJ, do your hand up? I think you're CJ's hand is uh, up. So. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to ask is the, perhaps this is in the proposal and I missed it. Is the sociocracy, socio, whatever you called it, <laughs> you got it. Sociocracy. Yep. Is there a proposal for that to uh, rental uh, status? certain amount of time and then we revisit and consider how it worked or is it sort of an all all in yeah i think that um our idea is that we would kind of do like a test run if you will and um take it until so six months fits nicely within the the budget year so that before we maybe officialize this um for next year's budget so six months would take us to december and then we would, you know, work on our budget for 2023. And that would be the time that we would, obviously there'd be some check-ins before that. Um, but the idea that we would, you know, make it super official going forward for the next budget. Does that make sense? Sorry. Yeah. I mean, the six month trial kind of just fits ideally with mm -hmm. July 1st. That makes sense. It's a good answer. Year. <laughs> Great. And cool. CJ, you are a little choppy, so we may... We may sound odd trying to respond, but we we caught what you were asking. So just uh, okay, great. And um, I'll turn off my video in case it's a bandwidth issue here. And yeah, that does that sound help. better? Thank you. No. Okay, great. Yep. Up. Super. Yeah, okay, I'll smooth. leave video off then. Um, yeah. So that sounds good. The um, so and that sounds fine. I would suggest sort of a three month or you know or a, kind of a check in with the board or a board review, just because it is kind of an unusual um, model that can work really, really well with the right team. And the uh, the only concern I have is if for, there's a need to change, is it essentially that we'd have three co-directors and no staff? Um, so we, we'll speak to that a little bit, but we'll have, we'll, we'll have three co-directors, which is, um, and just gets into the next slide here, is that, um, uh, will be exempt, and then the staff will continue. The part-time staff will continue on as is. Is everyone clear what that means? Exempt, because I did some good learning there. Right. So salary. Uh, sorry, non-exempt. Oh, so we're talking labor classification. Right. So the non-exempt, which we three are, are non-exempt. So we are watching overtime. We're eligible for overtime versus a exempt, which would be there's salary and then they're not eligible for overtime so generally when you make a change in classification there's some there's like these little tests that you do and i think i uh we talk about it later on in here that our the administrative tests for whether we would qualify as an exempt employee would still within our job descriptions we would qualify but we've historically just been non-exempt and so we've watched our like we submit for overtime is that yeah, no, no longer so eligible we, for overtime, salary, pay for tasks as opposed to time on the clock. Exactly. So three, and then, so um, well, I'll just jump into it. So quickly, okay. this is just the definition coming from Rural Vermont that sociocracy is a horizontal governance structure characterized by shared leadership, uh, equivalence, effectiveness, and transparency that offers an alternative approach to organizational structure and decision-making and emphasizes continued improvement. So um, that is what we're calling horizontal organizational structure here. So um, what does it mean for Orca Media? So we're looking at this role of an executive director, um, which has historically overseen outreach facilities and administrative work. And this is also language that we're uh, borrowing from the executive director job description and what you've seen in the executive director uh, job posting too. So uh, this is a transfer of to uh, a transition to three co-directors um, looking at outreach um, facilities and administrative um, 
roles and responsibilities among the three. So, and stop me, please, if you have any questions. So this is just kind of an overview, and uh, you might want to look at this in zooming in or on your paper, um, but this is splitting up what is from the language from the executive director job description uh, um, and categorizing it under uh, myself, uh, Zach, and, and Jen. So there's some shared responsibilities here. There's some shared values. Um, and the the kind of that overall outreach relationships um, is falls under myself. The, the equipment facilities um, aspect falls under Zach, and the administrative uh, falls under Jen. So, and you can see that those are those little post its were uh, those bullet points from the the job description. So, the ED job description. That's right. Divvied up. Yes. Your content manager outreach those remain this exactly. is not yes. these, these do not represent the full scope of all of your no, duties in addition to yeah yes thank you um so again this is the the kind of uh the, the look at that um once again yeah just just kind of fleshes out yeah but also this is, you can see overlaps here. So, you know, as far as hiring and, and a lot of this, I will say has been um, over the last year and a half has been held within our uh, wheelhouse, right? So a lot of this is not new to us. So this is a, a really natural fit that is how we've been kind of operating. So, you know, kind of owning these responsibilities, these roles and responsibilities and um, recognizing the overlaps and what we share too. So you can see there that, you know, recruitment and hiring has been shared among the three of us. Um, so um, again, looking at how this is divvied up, what does it mean for Orca Media? So um, if you can see, so that, that outreach uh, is, uh, falls under myself, community engagement manager, um, which includes, you know, outreach, fundraising, grant writing, programming, the facilities falls under the production manager, Zach. Um, so that includes equipment, studio, camera operator, training, post-production editors. So managing the, the part-time staff in the daily operations um, and then administrative that uh, is falls under content manager, Jin, uh, calendar management, um, also managing the, the camera operators and as far as availability and scheduling, um, content data systems, I'll add all things IT. Um, yeah. So I'm um, just, I want to pipe in. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and this, this slide kind of illustrates how our current position, because I think it was talked about like for the previous slide, like it's on top of it. But really, if we look at these, like the co-director said, those are things that we already are in charge of and doing. And so that's why those pieces of the executive director position flows really well into what we currently are doing since we were, like Zach was already managing the studio equipment and the camera operators. So being in charge of the facilities portion of it and overseeing and being on top of new, new things that come out in that, in that field, it fits right in. And that's why we, we, we thought that this break or this, I guess, division of tasks flowed really well with what we were currently doing. So even though it's on top of, it's not necessarily out of the wheelhouse. There's still three cohesive positions here. Sorry. This is new for Van, probably. It is, and I will say that, you know, in the very preliminary, you know, us, myself mentioning to folks that this was gonna be proposed, um, there was a lot of excitement too about like how this could be scalable, right? And looking at other nonprofit community media centers that are mm -hmm. of our size, that are small, and also experiencing a similar, you know, with the, the executive director, whether they're aging out of the organization or, um, yeah, or how it works as far as an economic disparity between the staff and the executive director. So there's a lot of, I think, us being um, cutting edge, if you will. So, yeah. But also the number of months between the start of it, right, and the uh, time that the new year starts, right. There's a lot it allows of allows tweaking. Exactly. It also te teaches other people that are interested. Exactly. What kind of things that came up as impediments or, or 
morale issues or competition or something like which that. is what exactly what we talked to of course there's you know thinking about like um how the board could be involved and we'll jump into that too uh, as far as how these in sociocracy this idea that there's like these overlapping circles of, of leadership right so we'll talk about that in just a second but i think you're exactly right and one of the exciting things that we spoke to nathan about was maybe understanding like how we share the the this experience with other uh, van members too is I think an important thing that we could talk about come December, January. Just um, Nathan knows this idea. Right, because we just mentioned okay, that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Does he have any background with horizontal management? Or little, or this yes, is new yeah, a little bit he's familiar with. Uh, I think he's worked with an organization that has this structure. Okay. So he was, when we presented it to him and that we were investigating this option, he knew and he's like, oh, I work with this other group and thank you all that. Great. So is he local? Yeah, it's my and then Sabine so factory of co-directors. They have co-directors uh based uh on that uh merger between VCAM okay. and RITN. So it's, it's a not, little not, bit different, but probably not, the most not truly more normal, yeah. but but it's not unheard of them. I do like that the one of my big questions looking at this was um splitting the job up since it's um Sort of being distributed among people, the people that are here, the people that are already doing things. Um, I think sometimes uh, you can tailor a position a little bit too much to the person. And so I was worried yeah. that, oh, if each position was tailored too much to who's here, if we lose one of these people, like sure. who goes to work in Hollywood or something like that, you know, then it's going to be it's going to be really hard to find someone who fits into this spot but it does look like these are sort of what you would imagine would be similar skill sets I and mean, if maybe uh per one person left and another person came in uh the exact responsibilities could be tweaked say right. okay that you know this new person doesn't really love this one thing and so maybe we can shuffle that sure however they might I come in i do i think that it's relatively looks to looking at it looks pretty well distributed and balanced and along um, sort of staff wise, like sort of typical, the sort of strengths that you would get in a person who is interested in these things. Right, right. Yeah. And these things and yeah. these things. And I think we also talked to my staff that when, like, when you look at a piece of content, it oftentimes requires all three of us to be involved at different parts of it. And so mm -hmm. it made sense that we end up working really well together and we often because to get a, a piece on the calendar and on the channel requires all three of us to work really cooperatively to make sure all these pieces fall into place. And so that's where the other part where like, you know, even though I think a lot of times there was struggles in the past of like defining lanes, but because mm -hmm. the content piece, because each event was very like it went into that lane and then came out to, into this lane that it was hard to like try to structure it that way. So having it be this horizontal one where we all kind of work together. And I think part of sociocracy is that it's very transparent and everything comes to the table and says, oh, this is what's going on. And everyone's like, oh, well, maybe this, that, and the other. So I think it's a structure where it makes the current workflow work better just because it does highlight that transparency and getting everyone at that same table and seeing what's going on. I, uh, I was a chaplain at Cornell and started the thing you know, setting up communes and trying to arrange how they were and started our own incorporated. And so I'm all aware of what can be the problems of this kind of thing. And one of the major crises in a lot of community groups is who's liable? And, and, and I think insurance people say, well, I don't even know how, how if somebody screwed up badly, which of the co-directors is in charge of taking responsibility? And I'm, I, I don't want to go into that, but I just think it's one of the issues we should think about. Absolutely. So I think we also had conversations about this, and that's where it would be um, the lead. So like community engagement and the outreach. So Christopher or the community engagement man manager would be the lead in that particular piece. And so they would probably come in and grab information and discussions through the two of us. but because it is in their like little segment that that's, they would take ownership and accountability for that piece and same with facilities and same with the administrative 
so that so that there wouldn't be like oh well whose is it that it would be like oh you know certain things have very clear like and of course there'll be some that are in between but that if we divided it this way it's not that you know they would be the lead and they're the ones in charge of being accountable for those pieces that didn't happen and I think also you know it's the new world structure so to speak that we're we've been talking about doing a new like a key indicator report so that we can start to track some out comes and measures that we can be like, okay, so, you know, these are the goals that we've set and these are actual things and we can pull together some sort of report that we can be managing ongoing so that it does keep things defined before it gets too blurry, I guess, and then falls into the cracks. Right, right. And I'll add that, you know, one of the other kind of situations that we imagined or dreamed up is that if there was a grievance, maybe uh, from the public or from a, a part-time right. staff, that maybe uh, these is what we'll get into is kind of like how the these leadership uh, circles, you know, overlap with the board. So maybe a board person would be the point person for all grievances, yeah. right? So that, that it was outside of the co-directors and that if, if somebody from the public or the, the staff that, wanted to, yes. exactly, let, and it would be a very formal process for, which, you know, we haven't had in the past. So it's like, I think that that would also. Right. Be we, had a, we had a personnel committee that recommended, um, you know, a form, Right. Yeah. So there's a running dock of exactly. like someone had forms, like, right. and, and it just with that. didn't. Yeah. Well, I think you know we will be able to launch something with better follow through than previous false starts. Yeah, and I think I'll this back. Is, that could happen sooner than later too. So that could happen with this trial period, right? Yeah. Um, Sounds really good. Sounds exciting. Yeah, yeah, I think we are. And you're excited. just getting started. So this is just kind of explaining um, some of the numbers. Uh, Jin has done a really great job uh, <clears throat> doing the math, I'd say. And then um, looking at based on an average of five hours over time, um, which so looking at based on an average of five hours over time, how does that uh, kind of transfer or you know to a, a sixty thousand a year salary so it's pretty close so we what we did is we we looked at that and then obviously we would be so this is that not exempt managers becoming exempt co-directors um yeah and i think that also you know just as a personal side note is that it's really exciting too when you know you are somebody that is you know you have a family and you're like thinking about those kind of things not necessarily to always need to depend on overtime right so if you get overtime because you have to do that one week versus if you just you know there's not overtime work you know you're going to lose out on that that income um, versus that steady uh annual so and then again this kind of looks at um the adjustment this is monthly um so then this it, is the old model exactly that's the old and then you can see the difference so this is also what's the kind of the cost benefit is that it saves money because you know without hiring an executive director you can see that that is saved um and then you can see here there's even a breakdown of the the savings of benefits right so salary plus the oh you guys got uh, to that too so that's looking at six months and 12 months and jen has uh broken this up just to see the the cost saved um second half of this year exactly yeah. mm -hmm. those are just, that's just savings this is just savings that last slide yeah salary so that was previous slide showed us how we got to that number exactly so these three kind of um give a little bit these are all looking at a month six times that gives us no that's weekly yeah so oh, sorry this one's looking at a week. yeah where was the one with the monthly that's this this one yeah this is monthly so this time six will get us at 17 on the next page. This one was pay and the next one was benefits exactly. this the, next the benefits. first line has first line has been so oh, oh yeah. so this 17 it must be that two. sorry yeah so this is not only benefits this is that this is that so we went from yeah. week to month to six months exactly. to the following year yeah get the bigger picture yeah that aggregates all three co-directors uh this last one is just the the what would be an executive director at six months and 12 months so this is just looking nice. at the savings of their, their month, salary um so the totals at the bottom 
the total 35,000 would be over the six months would be the savings exactly that we've gotten over this six months versus the old uh, executive the director. old model would cost that and much then more. next year will be 74,000 yeah so that's that's quite a savings unless you spread it out for the well, right. that's just that something that we now have discussed. Yeah, and I think that that's the exciting thing is that lifting exactly. up everybody that's already it's here. It's not going to the stock market. This would be great. Oh, yeah. Or maybe, yeah. Not buying crypto. <laughs> no. that's one thing that comes to mind is that the, the review or the flexibility, because there could be talent among your operators. And I know that, especially as you start managing State House and <clears throat> Montpelier Chamber, uh, it's more than Zach could be responsible for technically. technically. Oh, absolutely. So we all, yeah. I just find, seeing that there that there's an opportunity for the folks that are called yeah. exempt or yeah. whatever they're called to hit, hit start getting a piece of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. And it sounds like you found a gem with Sean. It sounds like he may be your example. Yeah. So I think that's where we were starting to yeah. talk about, like the production assistant, like adding newer levels mm -hmm. to the camera operator position so that we can, once we have the talent, start to say, okay, well, you know, we do want to, he's beyond just a camera operator. He can be our production assistant. He could be. So I think there's, there's flexibility as, you know, as, as we start to look at redefining stuff so that there could be positions that before, like it was always kind of scrolled in. But um, so I think it's definitely a possibility. And I think, especially now that we started to really think about the compensation policy and structuring our, rather than just having people come in and just being paid what that it allows us to start creating new positions that maybe haven't been there before. So that I think um, the other bit would be I think with the savings, I think part of where we started with the savings was that because there was that the, the budget that went into savings and how do we sustain it? Because it wasn't necessarily sustainable. And until we had those new rev, alternate revenue streams coming in, that it gave a little bit of leeway. And I think that we, you know, part of like this new model is we're able to embrace like starting to like think about all kinds of things and being able to put it out there before. I think with the previous model, like we present it and then it goes through the filter of the executive director and, and then to the board. And so hopefully with this model, because it's smaller circles that will start to get the board a little bit more engaged. And I think that we, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm late. No, that's exactly, <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Yeah, 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 yeah. are, are there objective uh, criteria for uh, levels of camera operators so that, that are, are listed in some uh, remote source yeah that's that, that's, that's the mean, work uh, pretty well to start as a camera operator there's not a ton of like to, it's it's pretty it's a great entry well, level be an academic oh you mean there. you mean the initial skill set walking in I'm, not I'm the talking, ladder I'm talking about how you split uh, paying the camera workers and what are the criteria uh, the people and that's what this right. that's a, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how they that's how they okay. you know, uh, thank how you. we well, yeah, I didn't realize you guys very, have done yeah. that much work on it. Yeah, and that I think will, I guess, we didn't really ask for like approval on that quite yet, but maybe we can touch on that in just a second. This is our last slide, um, and that does, um, we can come back to Ask on a prior slide, what's the, what's the rationale for normally management teams are on salary? What's the rationale for still leaving overtime in there versus no. giving them a higher salary? Go ahead. Oh, so this is not, it's, if we moved to exempt, we would no longer get overtime. Okay. So that's the new, the new summary is based on not using overtime. And so that, that's where the new stuff, the new the slide prior to this. Right. Is, These yeah, this, yeah, that's the one that this, be. yeah. So, so in the co-directorship, you would become exempt. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So right. and I With think, salary exempt. So this yeah. is a way to, to see how does, how does 60 grand shake out to like what we're making plus the ballpark five hours of overtime? Exactly. Um, right? Yeah, so this not... is this is no overtime land. Mm -hmm. This is this is with overtime, the whatever call it, olden days. Um did I just make that more confusing? No, no, I think and, well, <laughs> I was just gonna expand on that. Is that part of that like requirement of being a salaried exempt 
person is that level of like management and responsibility <clears> to and you know at, and we are all kind of available after working hours you have not you have really to be normal like a way to do right yeah, yeah exactly so that's kind of why we end up with the overtime is because we do have to manage things that are whether or not we're 11 to 7 yeah. you know so and i want to say you know rob has brought to the board the problem of you guys working way more overtime than actually that you're than you're actual claiming yeah so your level of dedication is you know there's a track record of you guys putting in i don't care what the clock says i yeah, have these sure. things to I mean, do so yeah. this is more natural to your the this, your positions and how you treat yeah them. i think it shows our commitment you're not organization clock yeah. punchers so i i see huge advantages of this this is work here and this idea a you already have learned out how to work together as a team. Right. B, you have talked about the, the, pro, the problem. We didn't have to do that. The board didn't have to sit around <laughs> and try to figure out, how about 31.5? Right. I don't know. Oh, what yeah. do you think, Mike, about that? And so you brought the idea to us and gave us, what, seven months or something to try it out and yeah, see how, yeah. how it works. Yeah. So I'm saying bravo. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the the transition from the hiring team kind of like, could this shape into something and then just yeah, staff like turning yeah. on a dime yeah. and 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 demonstrating both the teamwork and the viability uh at once was just like holy cow um and and then i guess this kind of ex uh expands on this idea of like what what is this like circles that is kind of unique to what this sociocratic model is that there's these uh overlapping like leadership circles and this, you know, similar to like committees, you know, so you see this kind of core circle of co-directors, you see the board of directors, and then we share in some of these, these important, you know, organizational things like policies and advocacy or policy and advocacy at, you know, representing community media out there in the world, fundraising, um, looking at HR and staff, especially that what we just talked about, that like grievance point person. Uh, so maybe that would yeah. be like an HR circle and then yeah. someone that in that HR really circle. Neat. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little soapbox. This is also designed that the board gets activated, right? Um, and I want to say thank you to the hiring team because I got really used to like emails immediately being responded to, solving problems on email, having this kind of responsive crew going. And I'm gonna I'm going to be a nudge with board members about just like come on. Right. you've got to be able to engage if not and you want to step down i understand people are busy but um here here is and and we move from monthly board meetings to every other month with the understanding that there'd be off month action going on with subcommittees and that you know had its false starts this really is like as you say the work they did i mean the boards, you know, we're not going to have to get down into the, the weeds at that level every day. Um, but I, it's it's the requirement for board engagement. It's just it's going to have to come up a notch, yeah, or two. Uh -huh. And I'm going to be that guy. And I think um, we can do a lot of that later too, as far as like planning internally. Then well, that's also something yeah. the board can work with somebody like Nathan. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. So it isn't like board staff funnel you know funnel coming from both ways and it's it's a it's it's this is a, a lot more um we also can take possibilities a, of openness new development um, funding development or a hassle or some kind of change in van and we can apply this leadership and then we can review how we did on it yeah, yeah. The board, was the board too heavy handed about this sure, you know, or yeah. did the board want to get out of it and make you move more than was on your job in the area that was on the Yeah, I think it would be really exciting, you mm -hmm. know, at some point, maybe that's like part of that three month check in um, is that we think about how we want to present this to the public, to the, um, especially with the fall. I mean, that is a little bit sooner, but like, you know, with the open house, with the, uh, our language that we use for the public, mm -hmm. um, and especially among other uh, band members too. So yeah, that's that's it for this. And oh, sorry, CJ, do you have a question? Uh, two questions, or maybe just two comments. Um, we've this. I think the structure is going to work really well for this group. So I'm 
I'm for it with uh, with a couple of future looking uh, thoughts, and um, that is, you three are passionate, you're committed, and you're experienced, and you work well together, and that is one of the most exciting and positive types of teams you can you can work on. So it you know it, they're a joy when they happen. The future planning is should heaven forbid something happen and the team changes at that time i would suggest for the sake of the organization that that trigger an immediate um you know board, board review so you've got a three-month review in addition to the team change that would trigger some kind of a, a, a review or a question about whether you need to return to a, a more of a traditional model and that's uh, that's all. Just uh, just I've seen it work. I, I think it's wonderful, and I've also seen it come apart when the high performance team uh, makeup changes. So the, I love the fact that we're looking at a three month check in, and I also love the fact that uh, you guys have proposed this. But my one thought is just is just that you know the two factors that would trigger a change, or the main factor that would trigger a change, is the team makeup change. Yeah, yeah, we did, we did have a real robust conversation about personnel changes. Are we committed to this in philosophical right. principle, horizontal democratic, or is this just the happenstance of three great personalities that work great together? And your mm -hmm. response was a nicely, um, I'm not going to try to reminisce on it, but do you guys recall I mean, your response? Yeah, I think that was a great conversation because we really did try to think about that. Like, you know, if Zach moves to Hollywood or something like, you know, if everyone's going to Hollywood. So, you know, um, <laughs> you know, I yeah. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? So I think that partially the way we structured it was these were positions that we are, we would have hired for. So like if I left, we would have hired a content manager. And I think that the additional bits that like it is, I was managing all this stuff, but I was always presenting to an executive director and you've taken away that piece. So in terms of if you were to find someone because they're very distinct, you could still hire someone and say, you know, and with any new person, you want them to work well. But I think that it is, Part of that function, we did try to make it positional rather than personalities. And so I think that hopefully if, you know, if there was the discovery of Zach's bones, that we would still be able to like take, fill his part because we were constantly in communication and being transparent about what we're all working on, that we could also find someone who's a production manager. And then it's also, you know, there's the opportunity of, do you want to be a co-director in the production realm and be in charge of facilities? And if they were like, no, I don't, I just want to be the minion in the background, then it's like we would know enough of the facilities to take on those additional roles that the executive director positioning mm -hmm. might yeah. have been. So I also think you're creating three more attractive positions. Mm -hmm. And that means in sure. hiring that you're gonna get and I, I do like CJ's idea that maybe any kind of uh, change would trigger some kind of like board review. And then, you know, maybe that position is always starting as just the community engagement manager. And that person also has to go through some kind of trial period, you know, um, before they can. Yeah. Kind of and also for professional that. development, going back to that yeah. grant conversation, that what that has been a exactly. massive gap. Exactly. So, you know, you and would I'm sorry to hear it actually for. helps us not get a cut of grant. <laughs> yeah. Right. I know. So that's, I think those are all, and that's something that we could definitely put into language as we go through this like strategic planning process too and making sure that you know maybe that's the that's part of the HR circle too is that that's just yeah you know did you um any kind of how often timeline anything with Nathan like I mean if you so got with his schedule I think nothing would really get started until the fall okay know? But are you seeing like a monthly dip in or a board? I mean, right, that's a good that's, question. So we just got uh, a little bit of like a menu of choices from uh, him, and okay. that has some. He's real, got some off like, the rack numbers. sort of structures yeah. that he can offer, and that's what he was thinking. Is that okay. maybe we would talk about? You mind that. bouncing that to me? Yeah, yeah I have to get into yeah. the nitty gritty. Right yeah, now. I just got that camp <clears throat> started, so I haven't. Sure, I sure, sure. Let him know we've received. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. No, if it's at if it's at fingertips, that's great. So that's need to get. That's it. I would say on on top of this that um, you know 
as far as like a timeline goes, I think that was it, your jurisdiction or, you know, as far as like starting that trial period and what you, what you think there. So that would be, I guess, the next step that we'd ask for. Yeah. Is CJ's hand. Oh, is CJ's hand up again? Is that a fresh new hand, yeah. CJ? No, it's, a, it's actually, a, it's, it's not, but I did have one more question. Um, oh, that's right. You did so say I, two, but you, you uh, invited a robust discussion. Oh, We're back around. <laughs> The second question or comment is, I think that um, the, is, is, again, a, a caution, but a, also an encouragement. You've created jobs that require more than 40 hours a week. And so my, my encouragement to you is to take a challenge to generate so much business that you end up needing to create a hiring opportunity that takes some of the areas you guys are covering and transfers it to a fourth person who is not a co-director. Um, because if something, if one of you does need to leave on, if you have a kid that ends up having a special need, uh, if you have a spouse that has, or a partner or a parent that suddenly needs more time, you're going to be in a situation where overtime is no longer so easy and at that point. So I'm encouraging you to work yourselves in a way out of a job, make it bigger so fast that you have to hire somebody and you can push, you know, push responsibilities under them. My, again, I'm really positive about this for this team. I'm really cautious about it being sustainable. So you'll have to grow and change the organization to make it so that you don't have to work quite as many hours. Uh, and I suggest also that the idea that y'all had about offering to host meetings and run them for other organizations is a good one where people will pay for that. And it seems to fit the mission. And I would suggest from a business development standpoint to develop that one, create a web page and an outrage and say, hey, we, this is what we do. We can and we can host your meetings. We can host your meetings if you're out of state coming in and you want to have a meeting with our businesses in state or whatever. Just a thought. Uh, and there's a whole network of sociocracy there is, organizations uh, that we, which is great and they, there's a group called sociocracy for all that's based out of amherst massachusetts so relatively in our region and they offer professional development too for boards and for folks transitioning so there's a lot of uh valuable resources in the area and i i will uh definitely second that that is uh, something that we've already kind of discussed like how can we maybe lift up one of the part-timers that we already have or you know is there something that we could package around you know that is like a production assistant or something like that so mm -hmm. that's definitely something that i like the idea of doing that sooner than later too yeah or maybe that's we give ourselves a bit of a challenge that by the end of six months you know we've also created this new position or something yeah yeah i would love to see some some sort of like media factories doing with having their classes and bringing people in and engaging with the community, I think will help us in a, a few different ways. We can, if it's doable, one thing is just name recognition will help. The other thing is it worth working the other way and letting people out there who maybe they're curious about podcasting or, you know, yeah. but they're like nervous about doing it. Like putting faces to names and the organization will help. Sure. You could find someone who was like, you know, maybe they hadn't been thinking about it, but they decide to pick up a few hours as a camera person, right? Right. You know, um, or and you you know create a a pool from which you draw, yeah, um, talent. S sustaining this the summer energy, you guys, yeah, two years we've, running, we've built up a lot of summer energy, and I mean, mm -hmm. as you know, a lot of the thirteen to fourteen year olds have asked to work here, so mm -hmm. we'll have to wait a little bit, but you know that. That was exciting to That's just cool. there and see there. And they're also like, oh, we can come in anytime. Yeah, and that was really cool. like they want to know we're here. Their own show with like and, automatic yeah. outreach. That's so awesome. Yeah, so it's, yeah, there is a lot of good, and I, I like that idea, especially that could be connect well with like the conversations with the Vermont public and, and mm -hmm. continuing to build up our like presence with schools and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, it's one thing when you're looking at a video, like watching on YouTube, it. it you're thinking about different learning styles. I'm constantly having this sort of separation with my wife, who is a very much, she likes to watch things demonstrated. She's right. a visual learner, watch 
and then does it. And I cannot learn it all that way. I have to like take gear into my hands and yeah, point yeah. a camera at something. And then it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, where, yeah, you know, so having a YouTube video would be nice. Someone yeah. can watch that. And some people, like 33% or whatever, will learn from it and benefit from it. But there are other people who, you know, would benefit from coming in and pushing the keyboard and seeing, oh, okay, sure. you can give direct feedback, you know. Cut it this way and soon. Yeah, Don't fade yeah. to black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mike, Ron, I have to uh, preside over a you're looking at the clock is in the July and you're doing a Zoom meeting tonight since I'm presiding. Okay. I'd like to get on the Zoom and see how the family sure. has to do Certainly. Um, so is there anything more you need for it? I mean, I, I we could probably use a motion to enact this on an interim six month basis starting with the fiscal year. It's July 1st, yeah. Is I would it? entertain that motion. Uh, would you accept a friendly amendment? Yeah. I'm going to second the motion, but I'd like to also offer a friendly. I haven't made it. I'm the chair. I can't make a motion. I can just throw bait out. <laughs> Go ahead, CJ. Can you make it a, yeah, can you make it a three month then? Um, a three month check in. No, three months experience. Yeah, we quite a formal. Every two, we meet every two months. So just logistically, our next meeting is August 20. Fourth, I believe, and then we would meet again in October. So three is our off month. So if you're willing to be a part of a interim committee, or call it four months, or call it six months, or call it two months, I'm just yeah. looking at the logistics of saying three months from here. It's an off right. month for a board meeting. Well, you're you're saying this is a challenge for the board to step up. So here's your first test. <laughs> um, I'd be willing to meet in September. Yes. Uh, if, if it comes all right that. um so that would you know that we could say that's the inaugural meeting of the uh staff circle and i'm happy to be on it great so that'll be uh september <laughs> we might want to call them teams <laughs> right but Mike, also, maybe you're right, and to keep it simple, you could do it a, a four month check in or a two month check in. I am, I am, I'm just bouncing around the possibilities of what a motion might sound like, CJ. Yeah. If you want to throw that one out there, uh, you just might might get a second given the time. <laughs> okay, so I'll I'll move to uh, you know fill in the words um, with a three month check in. Uh, requiring a special meeting of the board and staff. Is that full board or the uh, HR circle? Honestly, Michael, I, I think it should be the full board uh, because this All is right. the future of the of the organization and the board's job is to make sure that the organization is healthy. And given right, that this is removing an executive function, there needs to be one that checks in and says, you know, hey, how are you all doing? All right, so CJ moves to um, get this proposal uh, with a three month check in full board in September. And we'll pick that we'll pick that time at the August meeting to assess. And that's really a halfway point, but but um we'll we'll keep it at three months. Um is that because that way you've got to report it two months and then if there's a month to sort of rectify right, right. anything. And I think that makes a lot of sense to have it be a separate distinct meeting where that's what we're talking that, about. And that's and it. That is the item of that. business. And maybe a lot of people join remotely, but we do it at the three month. Um, all right. So that is CJ's motion. Rachel, was that? That's a second. That's a second. <laughs> yeah. And thank you. Um, further discussion, or shall I call it question? Well, what are the, what are the dates we're talking about? Um, you know, three months the, would be the by the end of October. The, right. I, the next the, board the, meeting the, is August twenty third. That's a regular board meeting, and certainly we we may kick the tires on this a bit. But uh, you let me find that fourth Thursday in September. You want to nail it down today? 
So I'm going to write in the yeah. 23rd. It's the next board meeting. That's, that's, that's the next regular board meeting. Um, the three-month assessment would fall on the 27th is the fourth Thursday. Of September. Of September. Thank you. That, works that, for me. that puts us... That puts us at three board meetings in three months, but so what? That's how we used to go. 27. 27. The, there you go. Your board's already more engaged. We got an extra meeting for everybody. <laughs> okay, good. Um, for thank you for clarification before calling the question. Are we clear enough to call the question? All those in favor of uh, moving to uh, the horizontal organizational structure as presented by the board this evening from uh, the begin beginning of the fiscal year, July 1st, uh, to this uh, three-month check-in at the end of September, September 27th. Um, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And that is unanimous. I just want to congratulate and thank staff for Thank putting you. together such a comprehensive um, vision, really a vision. Are we going to give this any name, um, this experiment? Well, I mean, you can say horizontal management. Uh, Let's just call it co-directors. Co yeah, co-directors is sort of less new. <laughs> and Michael, congratulations to you as well. Yeah. No, I think it's a binary, non-binary organization, so we should call it they. <laughs> I like that. I think, uh, am I calling a German at 840? I don't even think I need a motion if you read Roberts. Are we there? Okay. Uh, at, at 840, thank you, everybody. That was robust. <laughs>